Welcome to Leipzig. Wherever in the world you are joining us, and in some parts it's very cold, and for some of you the sun will be beating down, but look at this beautiful city, a cultural and trade center. It's about 150 kilometers southwest of Berlin, but for this weekend it is at the heart of the top flight equestrian sport. We have two World Cups being brought to you. We've got the jumping being rounded off later on this afternoon, but at the moment, for all you driving fans out there, we are bringing you the final competition in the qualifying leg eight of eight. And this series has been absolutely mind-blowing. The excitement, the pressure, the performances, hearts have thumped, the music's pumped at the moment top of those standings as we would expect Boyd Excel champion so many times going for his 11th title quite remarkable his career Bram Chardon knocking at the door how dearly he would love to win another title in Bordeaux in two weeks time and his father this incredible family Eyes Bram Chardon had a super super event on very late on Friday night we were edging over into Saturday morning bringing you confirmation of the running order that directly relates to the competition we had on Sunday. So reverse order of the placings, wild cards, Marika Kaham, Kusteron and Boyd here as a wild card as well. But that doesn't matter now for this competition on Sunday lunchtime, Central European time. We are on for this. Your bunch time, we've got three Germans competing, Marika followed in by George and then Michael Brockler, who gave a great interview. If you do get a chance to look at some of the media clips, Bram walking the course there will be concentrating, will be ensuring there are no missed gates. But do have a look at some of the interviews beforehand. And Michael Brockler was the one that was interviewed before this event. Really interesting to hear him talking about what he's going to be bringing confirmation there. Also of the course builder, it's his fifth course this series, Heron Hutemann from Holland. We've had exclusively Dutch course builders in the 2023-24 series. Boyd Excel with Emma Olsen at his shoulder. Did absolutely everything right. Hugh Scott Barrett on the bottom step, not in picture at the moment, but really set down the most emphatic display. The horses were on fire. All he had to do is steer them. All the training, all the match practice and that team of boys, the most fantastic advert for the older horse. We do promote in driving. It's a sport for all ages. We've got Dries in his late 20s. And really, apart from Boyd's incredible win, the evening belonged to him. Just some other guests having a look around the course. But Dries de Greek, the story of the evening on Friday was just how fantastic his rounds were clean just one late ball as he was finishing his drive off but his speed was way up there but it's all to play for again we come back to zero in terms of the drive off only three drivers going forward Coups de Ronde interestingly his first round expensive there were four balls to add Marie just walking behind him but his was actually the second fastest and we'll refer back to some of those times but do bear in mind that Boyd's time, first round, remember going over the same course, there's the A-team, Hugh, Emma and Boyd. So strategic. Fantastic to have Hugh back on. He did say in London he was making a guest appearance, but Boyd's pretty persuasive and no doubt there's been some bargaining going on in the background to get Hugh there. That's number six, which is the Oxer, one of the squares. 13 different elements, Bram looking there he commented before the competition started that in terms of strategy this is very much a psychological battle um, looking ahead to the game plan for what is coming in two weeks time for the final when the performances really do matter and what happens in that first competition is carried forward in terms of the times it doesn't happen in the qualifying rounds but for the final what happens right from the get-go really counts so they use this as a warm-up. We've got all the best drivers, everybody bringing out their best teams of horses, everybody on point, but only three will go forward. Michael Brockler, he can be so fast. When the balls stay on top, both he and Bram had blips. Michael missed a gate in the second obstacle as Bram missed the A gate going in for him when he was doing so well. He was only 0.17 down 
from Boyd's time on splits. And both of them can be faster. They both can be faster than the Australian. But if Boyd is on form, which he so often is, he is very, very accurate as well. But the calm before the storm. Action packed. You've got a great overview there. The bridge is three and number seven. And what happens? We've got a slightly more compact arena here, and the surface was coming to play. Quite a loose top on this surface, very different in each of the arenas. Um, look back to Geneva and Stuttgart, you had much bigger arenas, much more running. But here over Euron's course, we've got some fast lines in the beginning. There are alternatives in the obstacles, that second one, number nine, mostly on the left rein, which is great in terms of smooth driving and keeping up the momentum. But already the times from the get-go work. But what you have to be so careful of, and if you recall back on Friday night, Eisbrand had a knock of number eight as he was going through number five. So you have to be very careful in terms of finding your lines and making sure that you don't knock, much easier said than done, those other obstacles, balls, cones as you're going through. Some of them also going through slightly different lines, cutting through. Bram, you might remember, almost reversed back on himself so he could cut through the middle of obstacle number nine to come round on that sharp left to get his final line. But all the action here as the crowds are coming back and taking their seats. Some interesting statistics that relate to these enormous shows. About 1,300 bales of shavings are provided for the horses, 15 tonnes of straw, 9 tonnes of hay, 75,000 visitors, 250 different exhibitions. There's all the shopping stands as well. Four days of the very best of sport. And we are delighted, the team at FEI TV, to bring you the live action. Sunday lunchtime, the final competition in the qualifying legs before we go to the final few final tweaks on the ground and there with his earphones on he's had a busy season and no doubt warming up to build some courses as well for the outdoor season we've got a four in hand world championship to look forward to that will be in early September in Hungary, return to Hungary for a major championship for the foreign hands. Don't forget we were in Protonia in Italy for the last one when we doubled up with the eventing. But lovely shots. No lines in the sand yet from the carriages. Number nine, three and a half metres, those gaps between the gates. And they are relatively flimsy, those different elements. They do knock. And we've got these rectangular blocks on top they're not sitting in a lip or anything and they prove to be a little bit fragile at times and in, in some ways some of the momentum of the sand flying round it was all to play for cracking sport around about those early hours of saturday morning but those are the movable blocks that if they come off that's what adds the time. As we welcome in the first of our drivers, the leading lady, and she will get a very big cheer, no doubt, from the home crowd. Three Germans taking part. It is Marika Harm. She is driving Sotorel, Fredelin, Zazu, and Zetin. These are mainly her lovely big dressage horses. She really is such a stylish and elegant driver. She could have been joined by her teammate Anna Sandman. This year, two wonderful ladies. They had a very good European Championships earlier in the season. Well, we're now in 24. We're still talking about the 23 24 season as Marika just warms up the horses. And any second now, they will be asked to go up the gears. curves round, leaving number one. We 
these cameras are going to be bringing you the close-ups of all she curves around. This is a great chance to be up on the clock. We would expect all the times to be faster than in that first round. Do bear in mind that time that Boyd set on the first round over exactly the same course, 162.60. That will be in the minds of all the drivers. I could just see the elbows bending as she brings the horses back into her hand. We drop down to a trot. We've got trot and gentle canter on the outside. Don't forget those outside horses have to proportionately stretch round. So the inner horses, the ones on the insides of the bends, they're condensing themselves. The outside hand of the driver extends like levers, giving and taking. Four to add for Marika, for Germany, Nicole and Linda, the all-female team on the carriage. And she's out in 81.82. That's a few seconds off her time from Friday night. Four to add, so those knocks, they translate as the four seconds. She's got that good line in there between the E-gate that cone. Horses pulling together. You want them working as a unit. That's when you get your maximum performances from them. And just look at how that inside horse is dropped in just as he responds to the tweak on the reins. Look at, gosh, it's hardly a tweak, the size of those balls, but she's been very careful to avoid that number six because that does add as a penalty. Keeping the lines tight, the questions being asked. This is where you really want to keep the flow and the bounce and the forward momentum through E and to F. Forward, forward. And a lovely line out there, 146. Do keep a note of these times. Still on four to add. Those horses chomping, they wanted to go. That stayed on top, looked like she was a little bit wide on the outside. Lovely drive from Marika with her four big specialist dressage horses. Don't forget, it's incredible what she gets from them. And a super, super drive from Marika Harm. She will be delighted. 174 will just bring you confirmation of that in a moment. Big smile from her 174.58 and so she ends 178.58 for Marika Harm. That is probably the last time we will see her in this current series. She hasn't this time popped herself into contention for a place at the final. Don't forget, as well as the six qualified drivers, there is... Oh, that was where the ball went. Great close-up there, thanks, team. And that's how easily they roll. Next in, taking the course for York of Einstein. He's got his friend, Brady Hoskin, also a team driver, and Manuela. Right on the top navigation step. There's an awful lot of work for... Meva is on the top step there. They're in charge of just keeping the turntable, that talk, as we say in English, for the carriage, making sure the back end doesn't flip around. When you're on these surfaces, if, particularly if the top is a little bit loose like it is here in Leipzig, you don't want that back end of the carriage flicking out. So that's what they're doing, as well as the navigation. As your winds up his horses, and they were very impressive. And Fortunately, had a few penalties to add in terms of knocks, but he has got better and better as the season has gone on. Really warm to it, and no doubt will be putting everything into being able to qualify again for the series 24 25. Those dates are out already, but they're running very, very well. Let's see how clean he can go through number five. Quite deep round there, but he's not losing any of his speed, keeping the horses in a canter. That's what you want. And they've changed directions, just moving. Great lateral movement there, certainly from his 
leaders moving themselves into each other. That was a super schooling move from him. Into D. Good rain work from Georg. They're responding very well and his hands are improving all the time in terms of his reactions. And the horse is responding. That's Super Rene just bouncing around the back that there. F it. and go on, clean out, York. You've had a good obstacle. Might have wanted to come out a little slot below that, but that's okay. Just a slight hesitation out in about 84. Pretty much on a par with Marika, who's just gone, but the difference being he's got nothing to add to this time so far. He's leaning forward. The horses are doing a great job for him probably slightly wishes this wasn't the final round for him because so far for the German one of the best rounds we've seen from him keep it up that's it come on don't lose your momentum it's been so good there B notice that white letter red right white left they're giving him everything what willing, honest horses. And the loop through D all on this left rein at this point. So you tight turns, much easier said than done. Think each horse is about 2.5 meters long, as I said. So you've got about seven or eight meters in horse by the time you've got your carriage and everything as well. All that power. What do we reckon? They're going 30, 35 kph. Incredible round from the German. Let's see if he can end with no balls to add. Oh, come on, George. This would be a great round for him. Oh, brilliant. What a note to end his season on. Absolutely brilliant. Big smile. Well done. 178.73, just a fraction behind Marika, but really in terms of placings, I'm sure it matters not because he drove a really, really lovely round there. And he can end his season knowing that he went out on a high in terms of a clean round, good lines, perhaps lost a little bit of momentum in the final obstacle but lovely driving as we welcome in our third German Michael Brockler is currently ranked fourth so we know he's going to be in Bordeaux this for him will be a qualifying score we've got three wild cards he is not one of them now when he gets it right he'll be doing his very best not to miss a gate again this time he is so fast relatively young team of horses Baloo, Joey, Sunny and Fabius Baloo is his left one. Oh, that's an early four to get I did that last night as well come on Michael he really would very much like to be in drive off contention he can be very fast he keeps up the speed clean over the bridge that was number three four and then five is the marathon obstacle and he's good on lines he's got these sharp relatively little horses the leaders in particular they're like ponies Baloo and Joey Joey on the right you will often hear him talking to Baloo each one of our drivers tends to have was their soulmate often one of the horses up front the one they really relate to the one they rely on the one that pushes his mate look at them dancing good boys german bred horses such characters joey in particular always has a great expression on his face his ears seem to pop out to the sides bounce 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 tight on his lines Kept the bounce up, kept the energy up to eight. Oh, is he keeping himself in drive off contention? It's fast. When he puts the foot down, he has just as much acceleration as Boyd Bram, Koo size brand, 
and Dries. All of them worthy of claiming titles. But luck not on his side. He's up to 12. Said in his interview how much he enjoys being in Leipzig. Obviously, the Germans will have the support of a very knowledgeable crowd. Horse sport in Germany is huge. They are very, very successful if you think about how all the show jumpers, in particular the German ladies, absolutely at the top of the dressage World Cup standings as well. And he's out. Times are good, but there's 12 to add so far. Time will be very good. As he comes down the short side, everybody forward, all the energy, all the momentum. Look how well they're running together. He's going, oh, that was a great skid round the corner. Hold on, everyone. But 16 to add this. Oh, so frustrating. Fantastic time, 167.82. not nearly 10 seconds off the time he had 179.82 179.82 but looking back at his time from late on Friday but oh I mean what a great horse up on the right there did his very best a little bit of jumping to avoid it but even being as honest as he was to try and avoid that co he just couldn't so not nearly 10 seconds off his round in terms of time. Did everything right in terms of the acceleration and the propulsion. Horse is doing everything for him, but he will be in Bordeaux as we welcome in Bram. Now, everybody, he's got many fans out there. He was working in Florida recently, training some of the American drivers over there. And there will have been a lot of analysis from Bram. He is very, very thorough in his preparation, very active mind as well, very strong psychologically. He knows what he has to do to recover because, as he said, after his rounds in Geneva, he was on a real high after Geneva. He'd won in Stockholm, he'd beaten Boyd, and he'd kept the pressure on. And Stockholm, then Geneva, he had two very good wins. And just to see his emotions and hear his voices after that, so talking about how brilliant his horses are, couldn't have done any better for him. Ping, 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 on they go. Oh, Brown, what can you do? Because you can be so fast, his lines are so good when everything goes right. He is forward of those leaders into those breast collars. Look how they're just arched a little bit over the shoulders to allow as much freedom as possible. The design that goes into every aspect of the harness, the carriage, the streamlining. Over the years that the World Cup has grown and grown as a sport and the excellence that we've expected from the likes of Bram, Icebrand, Boyd, Coos, those have been doing it right from the beginning almost. Do have a look at the details like the harness. Keeping to the inside of that number eight. Dancing, dancing. They're so willing. Almost look at the legs going out on angles. They're like ballerinas, these horses. Oh, it's a joy to watch them when they're on form like this. Cabram's long body is reflected in the direction. Arms, arms forward and out in. 76 77 now that's probably a second down on the speed that boyd had yesterday but today it's about getting into the drive off 100.46 oh split time not quite there yet yeah down nine seconds in the green on what's gone before but he will be marking himself against boyd icebrand Coos, and Dries who are coming after him. Now, he got the right gate this time. Few. That box is ticked. Oh, they're going really well together. 
Leaning in, particularly those leaders. Tight, tight. Round D, E, good. Oh, right on that gate. Nothing to spare as Bram navigates out. Yes, still clear. Come on, Bram. Leave the balls on top. Are you going to do what you came here to do and get as many points as you can before going into the final? Looking good, looking good. He's done it. And the time, 162.17. Yes, he's done it, 162. And that is the fastest time over the course. Boyd, the other night, 162.60. That's it. Big sigh of relief. Leanne, you kept him right. And on the back as well. The family the friends, everybody pulling together. We've got Koos coming in next. Eisbrand, Dries, Boyd. Has Bram done enough? He's got some incredible competition ahead of him, but he can do no more now. Still got his game face on. He could have just kept everything together. That was a very, very tight, accurate performance. Now, Koos had a great time. He has been so fast this season. These horses really do cover the ground. And when the balls stay on top, he is pretty much assured of a drive off place. His time, he didn't make the drive off, remember, on. Friday. His time was 166.41, but had 16 to add, but did enough to keep himself into fourth place contention. But the brief will be, as the clock starts, that he is aiming for a drive-off place. <laughs> it's always so fast, and he and the horses give it 100% every time look at them going down really leaning in gosh that gray horse in front's putting his shoulder into it fabulous to see has he got them in a different order sometimes they're checkerboard style if you look at the the two dark browns and the grays might just have swapped around the order as the time has gone on through the season Tibi, Zenta, Futa and Edgar are the four. Now these times coming out will be important. Forward, forward, D. You can hear him calling Tibber. Fantastic horse Tibber also drives as a single in the World Para Championships, very much a mainstay. Just a Durand, and he's out, good time, good time. He's absolutely in touch with Bram's time. Splits will be coming soon, might be a fraction slower, but very good for the Dutchman. Oh, wow! Oh gosh, this is exciting. Breathe, everybody, breathe. 0.65 up on Bram. This is all about the ball staying on top now. Bounce, bounce, forward, forward. This is fantastic competition. Another one who will have gone back to the drawing board after Friday. So much experience, so much wisdom. So many times he's been in this position. And he and Marie, what a unit. She's a judge herself about to go over to America and do some adjudicating herself. She's been a chef to keep as well. So she brings so much experience and passion. Now let's see what's gonna happen. Clear so far, come on Koos, you are giving us such great sport on a Sunday lunchtime in Leipzig. This is gladiatorial this is a contest 
Is it? Oh, oh my goodness! Not quite so fast, but still clear. 165. Just slow down a little bit, probably in terms of trying to keep those balls on top. But a great round from Kusteron. 165.16 just edges oh three seconds behind bram he was up on the split time but i think a tiny little bit of caution just went in to that second half of the course for him just look at how that carriage is skidding round did everything right but neither of them neither coos or bram teammates compatriots are guaranteed of a place in the drive off yet because we have our three drive off competitors from friday now in eyes brand chardon with jeanette his daughter on the back perhaps had his sister he's had leanne on who helped him all through his career from pony teams eyes brand He's got Chris Van Roy on the bottom step as well. Swapping horses, introducing new horses and aged 63. Absolutely maintaining his form, his hunger. As he starts, Eisbrand Chardon, what can he do now in the next 165 or so seconds? here in Leipzig. Will it be another drive off for the great man? We will just have to sit on the edge of our seats and wait. These four horses did everything right for him. The leaders, Fabri Fampton. Phantom and Conversano Batosa. He was in London, one of the newer horses in the Chardon crew. And the whistle and the names. They are bowling through brilliantly, leaning in tight on that D. Look at how the carriage swung round there. So spare, nothing to waste. Look at this time. How's he going to be? F coming out. He's on point. Oh, come on, Icebrand. Yes, yes, that is absolutely where he needs to be in terms of the time. And this is really going to be about the ball staying on top. It's about accuracy now with these final drives because we've had two fast clears from Koos and Bram. They put the pressure on, but pressure is manner to these drivers. It is their fuel. How well these horses are going. At their peak as well at this point in the series. Sharp left back to B. This is the one that is very much on the left rein. So keeping that flow left, left. We'll just see he's got the big loop in his left hand there, but leaning forward, everything willing them round, and that's four gone. Ooh, is that going to be pricey in terms of that drive off place? Just look up at the top there, you could see the block on the ground. So that's going to be four to add. This is now about time for Icebrand because the competition is so hot so tight with what's gone before that the time is great the time is brilliant 163.14 163.14 only just behind his brilliant son but that's popped him behind coos that's crucial because of that four 67.14. Is that the last time we will see Eisbrand here in Leipzig? We will have to wait and see the crew on the back there working so hard as well. Everybody, equine and human, and the kit, the carriages, harness, everything.
playing their part. Look how they condense. What good horses. It's like a concertina. Now, Dries, what can you do? These four horses gave him everything. Did he peak too soon or is he in his stride? We will have to wait and see. Icebrand now lying in third has given him potentially, if he can produce the same form that we saw on Friday, if he can do that again, he's going to give himself a drive off place. But we've just seen Brown put himself very much back in contention. He dropped out of contention on Friday through the gate. But look at him go, look at him go. Those horses, it's like watching the start of a flat race with the jockeys. 29-year-old farrier from Belgium, Dries de Greek. Anne Botterberg and Frederick de Brun on the back. These four horses, they're like the tiggers, if you follow A.A. Milne, of the World Cup circuit. They have extra springs in their legs, KWPNs. But if you look back through their breeding, which is always interesting when you're not glued to this screen, you'll see that some good hackney breeding, the English bloodlines so associated with proper driving horses, as we say. The quality, the bone, the stamina, the intelligence, the character that has been bred into the modern KWPM driving horse. Big umbrella in terms of the breeding. They differ very much from the jumping and the dressage horses and probably a couple of seconds down as he came out of that, but crucially still on zero. Split will be interesting. It's Bram's time we're now referring to. Oh gosh, nothing in it. It might be red, but it's only 0.3. And he does have a lot of fuel in the tank if the balls stay on top. So close between these horses and these drivers. All of them giving every ounce. Still are relatively young in his career in terms of the World Cup. He has been at the finals, hasn't been on a podium. He was fourth and fifth in previous finals, but by the form that he's now showing, oh, look at those leaders giving everything. They are so keen. Breaks off. Foot down. And what has he done? 164. Not the fastest, but he's put himself in front of Koos. He has done enough to give himself a drive off place. 164.7, nothing to add. Bram on 162.17. It is now going to be down to Boyd XL to determine the final three. And on his form and with his consistency, only one blip stock come from him this season, really and truly. We would say, if you were laying bets, that Boyd will take a place in the drive off, but we will just have to wait and see. If you're watching this live, isn't that fantastic? Not a spare seat in the house in Leipzig. As this supersonic team, look at them just bounce, bounce, waiting to go. They've all been warmed up outside, but this is such a well-trodden path for them. All by one of the horses in their late teens now. And look how fit and toned and ready for action they are. His two drives on Friday were flawless. As he goes 
just sit back and watch what we assume will be a fantastic performance from Boyd, Emma, Hugh on the carriage, Bundy, Jupiter, Poker and Mad Max. That's the four this weekend in Leipzig. Number three over the bridge, making his loop swinging round, smooth, fast, galloping, committed. Leaning in, taking the loops, tight swing, as if they need any encouragement. Oh, super turn. Swish round there. Every horse doing the job to its maximum. Just look at the top lines on them. They look beautiful in ridden dressage as well. They are so conditioned. Four to add now. Now, the time was about the same as the others, but we've added four. This is getting even more nail-biting. What are we seeing being played out before us? A rare error from the reigning champion. Four to add so far he will not want anything else he had the fastest time over this course on friday carriage swinging round hugh will have worked out the split times at certain points oh slight hesitancy slight hesitancy he was going for that tight line on e He's here as a wild card, so he's got his maximum points. This is more about the academic and psychological side of it in terms of the mind games that go into the final. And he's the last person that would want anyone to think that he can be beaten, but the time is going to be really good. What's he going to do? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, 162. 0.10. I think we've got a different lineup, and I think Boyd knows it. Oh my goodness! My hand, hands are over my eyes. What have we just seen? Boyd Excel is not in a drive-off. Wow! Oh gosh! Through gritted teeth. Don't ever predict anything at the start of a round. My goodness, commentators curse on that one. The four to add. We are going to have a different winner in Leipzig. We really do have a competition on our hands. That is not what the form book would have suggested. Bram Chardon, Dries de Greek and Kusteronde in the final. Boyd just edges himself out, as does Eisbrand. Wow. Absolutely fantastic sport. Well, thank you, athletes. Thank you, horses, for keeping everything so riveting and exciting and alive right down to the wire. That was Marika's knock. We say goodbye to her and to your we also wave off from previous rounds glenn gears oh look at that lovely horse from michael Prockler just jumping there what an honest horse but they all are so the four we wave back but goodbye so i've just mentioned the other and jerome um Vutaz. they were the other four that were part of our 10 qualified drivers and we thank them i'm sure they're also watching for their input in this fantastic series but do not move, do not even leave your screens wherever you are because we have a really, really exciting drive off coming. Oh, just see where that was. <laughs> Watch Ice Brands. If you saw his eye line, he saw that happen at the time. Great replays, reliving 
the action. Sunday lunchtime in Leipzig. The final leg of the qualifying rounds and it's all to play for. Bram, Dries and Koos. Boyd is not in the drive off. His time was great, nothing wrong with the time, but that knock, the four to add, just popped him out of contention. He will drive again in the final. Now, what happens next in terms of the amount of points? Bram potentially could go forward on 30 as well because out of the four qualifying rounds that the drivers do it's three that count they do have one bogey score so don't forget that Boyd has taken part in all of the legs except in Geneva he's had three wildcard tickets as well so that's as much to keep his horses on form get the match practice the more competitions you can drive the better that said Dries who's stuck to the four qualifying rounds it's all about knowing your own strategy you have to not be swayed and influenced by what other people's game plans are. So the tractor's just going round, and Guron Hutterman and his crew there, Mark Benton, will be judging as well. All the FEI officials, top grade officials, overseeing the sport in Leipzig, the jumping and the driving. All real experience, they do all sorts of refresher courses as the year go on. So tight teams, we've got stewards around the back as well, managing the warm up and the cool down at all points. The welfare of these equine athletes is absolutely the number one priority. So those sticks in the hands are very important. Those are the marks you'll just notice. Certainly, that number uh, code falls in place on the side. That's number one just being put back out. And to ensure that it's a level playing field, fair for all. Those cones sit at about one point, they can sit between 1.92 meters wide. The carriage is 125 centimeters that's the width the same as they would be on the marathon and those are the margins so do the maths and just work out how much space they have between them not a huge amount bit more room when you're thinking about the 3.5 meters in the marathon obstacles but don't forget as they're going through those gates they're also turning often two different points of articulation because you're bringing your leaders round, your wheelers are probably heading in a different direction and the carriage at the turntable with the pole is also swinging round. So so only about 65 centimetres. So if you divide that by two, you're really talking just over 30 centimetres. If you get your middle line going through the pairs of cones, only about 30 centimeters so just think about that in terms of finger widths not very much all about accuracy so we have our three drivers all three of those drivers will be getting the 10 7 and 5 points to go forward there we go just confirmation who's going forward Koos is a wild card, just checking my facts here. He knows he's going to be in the final. Yeah, confirmation it was Koos is a wild card, but it doesn't matter because it's elementary now in terms of knowing about performance, knowing what buttons to press with the horses and against the competition. Did you see that horse? He's doing flying changes. Isn't that fantastic? Look at him. He's having a bit of fun. That is a cracking picture of that wheel horse, the gray wheel horse just coming in and doing some flying changes. Now that's showing off. 
in harness. That was brilliant. The tempi changes in his canter. Loved seeing that. What a clever horse. Well, we know they're clever. We've just seen them go round like the clappers and get themselves against incredibly stiff competition into a drive-off. So great round from Kusteronde. His time was 165.16. But most importantly, it was a clean round. Great angle there on the camera, that sand flicking up. Same again from the Durons. On the podium already, top three podium places but what will be those positions? These fit horses running. Koos is tall, leaning forward, using all his physicality as well in this. And very committed on that turn into A. Round to B. Just look how the horse is swapping, bending cocking the heads, just leaning in to the rain commands. Oh, that's a knock. Yep, that's gone. So that will be four to add. Uh, might just slightly affect his lines, just so he avoids hitting that again. But you'll just see how flimsy they are. And out through F. What will his time be? Again, in touch with time with what we've seen before. 74-ish. So on the pace in terms of time, but four to add so far, quite clear on the screens to see what happened there, but still a very committed and fast round so far from Kusterand. 11 years ago, he was the champion. So he has been a World Cup champion, but also a multi, multi medal winner on the brilliantly successful outdoor Dutch team. They were European champions in Holland in ex lu last autumn. But no sooner did that season finish than they had to pick up their teams for the indoor circuit, which started back in early November in Lyon. And it's been epic. We've had so much drama and we continue to have drama. Still only four to add through that second Oxa. Number 10, always oh, looking down. Ideally, you want to keep the eyes up because you change your balance enormously. Head is the heaviest part of the body, really. So you want to keep the head on top of the spine looking forward. Oh, just frustrating. Went for that final line, but it's all right. The cone's already been driven. So we don't have a rebuild or anything, but that's eight to add. That was a bit of bad luck. He'd obviously gone for that really tight line, kept up the momentum, just slightly misjudged it, but doesn't matter because he's had a cracking Leipzig. Look at the time, 167.58. So not quite so fast, lost a bit of momentum when he was just anchoring up a bit, eight to add. So that's what we're working on for Kusta Rond, but at the very least we'll finish his Leipzig in third place. Doesn't need the ranking points as a wild card, won't be getting them anyway. But I think the highlight of the round was watching the horse coming in doing his little leg changes. That was brilliant. And actually an indication of the training, the many, many hours of training. It was interesting just before the driving started, if you've been watching all the coverage as Dries de Greek just warms up, we had the young horse jumping for seven and eight year olds and the importance of the hours and the training that goes in that's age appropriate. Now, interestingly, some of the horses on these teams, Dries, Dries included, sort of slightly technically come under the young horse championship. We have it in driving as well for singles. It's a relatively young team here, but they've shown a lot of wisdom and a lot of Oh, old before their years, I think we could say. They've been very, very impressive, very committed, very confident. And that's one of the key things when you're bringing on the younger horse. It's about confidence. 
certainly in driving, when they have the benefit of being next to their mates as they are here, just look at them running forward. They seem to know where the lines are peeking out from their blinkers as Dries gets underway. And his, the speed, the acceleration, the fitness. And they're a very well-matched team. If you look at the size and the conformation, they blend quite well in terms of colours as well, but that's just fairly superficial in terms of the depth through the rib cage, the length of leg. Look at how they're muscled over their quarters. Again, they've got good top lines, really well matched. And it's not vital, but it helps because that helps in terms of stride, balance, covering the ground. All these drivers will have spent so much time beforehand getting the coupling reins right. And that's obviously if you're a multiple driver or a pairs driver, you know that that's when you've got the V that comes from the outside rein. And that's one of the single most important parts. And, and that's very much part of the homework. Now look at that time when he comes out. It's been about 73, 74. Yes, yeah, spot on. Spot on time coming out for the Belgian. And it's been an absolute joy to watch these four horses working so well together. One of the highlights of the latter half of the series. Just like the humans, they can have good days and bad days, but they're having a really good weekend in Leipzig. Oh, fantastic turn. Wish that was a V shape. It briefly formed an arrowhead, cracking. And that's one of the brilliance of one of the many brilliant aspects of this team is Dries's rain handling, his responses, his reactions, and how fast that gets translated down the reins. Very impressive. Just a slight check through that Oxa, but his lines have been absolutely spot on. Run, 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 horses. On they go, streamlining themselves. This is going to be a good time. He gets that line right. It's right. It's going to be, oh, nearly, gosh, it was so nearly sub 160. 161.14. Are we looking at a new winner? Look at that. 161.14. Dries de Greek, we salute you. That is an incredible show. And he has put himself into championship contention. Same again in Bordeaux from the Belgian. Look at that from Anne on the back. That's commitment. She's been doing her yoga as well, being able to bend over backwards. Everybody in the hall appreciating what they're seeing. Now, the pressure. Bram Chardon, but he's been here before. He's been the last one in. These horses, such a tight unit. recovered so well from Friday night, but that's what they do, the mental strength from them. They have to put emotions like frustration, anger, frust it has to go. And you start again and then you cross the line and it's all to play for. These beautiful gray horses, Bram Chardon. And Dries has put on the pressure. There is absolutely no margin for error, no balls, no knocks nothing and he needs to be fast which he can be he will be he is yeah just looking back over a shoulder up and down you can hear her talking to him as he drops a 
swinging round, but his lines are good. Flow forward, forward, forward. He's almost wiggling himself. D, good. Tight. Oh, that's a good turn. That's a good turn. Now look at this time. Oh, but there's four to add. Four has gone on. Dries has applied the pressure on the nose in terms of time. On the nose, but is he going to be four seconds faster than Dries de Greek? Doesn't look like it. 2.21. The Belgian, he must be out there. Can he watch the screen and see what's happening with Bram Chardon? Bram looping up the reins. And don't forget what a great round Cousteronde had as well. On, on, D. This has driven really well, the second obstacle like a snail shell round in the circles round and round and out time to beat on your screens 161.14 everything to play for everybody giving everything every muscle every sinew what line is he going to take can he do it can he do it can he do it Oh, it's so close. How is your mental arithmetic? I mean, that time, it was our only sub 160. The time, the time was amazing. But not enough. Oh, there's nothing in it. It was so close. Just that one knock. And we have a new winner. In the World Cup this series, Dries de Greek absolutely did everything right this weekend. Bram gave it his all, and that time the only one sub 160 gave it his all, but it wasn't quite enough. And the Belgian, fantastic sport in Leipzig. Confirmation. Look how close it is. They both finished on 161. That's all it was, but it was 161.14 to the Belgian and 161.97 to Bram Chardon. And Kusteron, great drive from him, 175.58. Fourth place for Boyd Excel, 166.10. Um, they will get those that aren't wild cards the ranking points. Eisbrand in fifth. And confirmation there of the ranking points so Bram will have got another seven I'm sure he would have dearly liked to have got a ten so that he would have gone in equal first but it doesn't matter so much so that's the six going through, through. Bram, Eisbrand, Koos, Dries and Michael Boyd those are the six confirmed qualified drivers for Bordeaux. So the horses behind the scenes and off camera will be just having a leg stretch, bringing the heartbeats down. Just as the arena is cleared. So that's the last course we see from Jerod Wittemann as well. He's given us some great courses, has a combination of the fast elements down the long sides and across the middle and then asking questions absolutely spot on in terms of the questions that were asked at this point in the season we had a combination of clears a combination of mistakes at all parts of the course so very very balanced course for leg eight the course builders and the officials will say at the start of the season that it's a bit more open but I think for me, the highlight was that incredible turn in obstacle number nine from Dries de Greek, where he didn't just turn back on himself, he doubled back on himself. What wonderful horses. Uh, 
Now there's the crew. <laughs> They've been on that sort of royal blue poster all the way with their flag, swapping allegiances, backing whichever winner there is. Do stay tuned after the driving if you're a horse sport fan because the crew will be bringing you the Jumping World Cup. It's our eighth leg for the driving, tenth for the jumping as we sign off in Leipzig. And that's our season just galloping to its crescendo. Two weeks time, we will be bringing you live coverage from Bordeaux as well. Late night on the Saturday for competition one, slight rule change in terms of what is carried forward and how that's worked out. But I will be joining you for the commentary there as well. So we'll explain all of that live from Bordeaux. But do book your place. And then it's around about four o'clock, 4.45ish local time in Bordeaux for the all important second competition. Where if this weekend's form is anything to go by, will we have a new champion? It's been quite some time since it hasn't been a, an Excel or a Chardon. Boyd first won in Gothenburg in Sweden, 2009. That was a combination of the 0809 season. Not forgetting when the World Cup joined the FEI World Cup stable. It was the 2001-2002 season. We had indoor driving for a long time before that, very much part of some of these shows have been going for sort of over 30 years and, and driving has been in some of those places. Michael Freund, the great Michael Freund, he was champion one, two, three, then shared it with Ice Brand. Gosh, 20 years ago, 2004, 2005, that's when Ice Brand shared the title. He took it again, Ice Brand, in 2006. In seven, Michael Freund again. Christoph Sandman took it here in Leipzig. Leipzig has been a venue for the final before in 2008. And then Boyd Excel started his name went on to that leaderboard where it has appeared many times. So 2008, 2009 season. Koos broke his run of four in 12, 13. Boyd took another two. Eisbrand again in 16. Then two more for Boyd. Then it was the turn of the next generation. Um, Bram took it in Bordeaux. Then Boyd 20. 19 and 20 then obviously we had that was in Bordeaux then we had the the missed season because of the pandemic and Bram took it in Leipzig here in the big hall when we had that incredible 2022 relaunch of the championships and we hadn't had the full qualifying rounds because there were still some events not taking part but when we had the four world cups we had dressage jumping driving and the vaulting in this very same hall in 2022 and thereafter we've been back on the full program of qualifying events Bram and Boyd the first to say they've been playing tag for the last well six years five seasons if we discount the one that was lost and yet we could have don't discount people like Michael Brockler as well who when the ball's still on top is very fast as well Bram's time very consistent in terms of what he's shown us this series his times have been the fastest it just depends whether you have that extra four or eight to add that can make a difference. So the arena bathed in blue and a real pleasure to present to you Dries de Greek, our winner in Leipzig and his fab four, Hunter, Leon, Kane B, 
and Big Star. And this really is dream come true stuff. He's quite a wry, self-contained character. Internalizes an awful lot. But a tremendous horseman and sportsman. So the form book was slightly thrown out in terms of who we saw both in Friday's drive off. We would have thought Brown would have been in it. And then again today with Boyd not being in the drive off. But that is what makes this such a fabulous sport to follow. And these wonderful equines who can be flat out gallop 10 minutes ago and they come in and stand like statues for the formalities and another name to add to the hall of fame this series has been about boyd and bram Meine Damen und Herren, ich darf auch die letzten von Ihnen noch bitten, sich von Ihren Plätzen zu erheben, die Griechen, den Leipzig. Sieger mit der belgischen Nationalhymne. Ladies and Gentlemen, please stand for the National Anthem of Belgium. Gratulationen zunächst für die internationale Jury dieser Prüfung unser Richter aus Deutschland Herr Eckart Freiberg. And congratulations also to Bram Sharon and Kusteron and a very welcome FBI glimpse of Casper there that's the brown and white horse who is such the hero for the Chardons. And Casper travels now as the spare. He has been competed, but he's a firm favorite with the fans. And he gets popped in for the prize givings. Perfectly permissible. Each of the drivers tends to travel with five horses, but there's also a ruling that as long as it's nominated, and this would very much apply to the Chardons, that they could travel with nine horses so a spare can be shared between them the organizers of the 26th partner preferred show in leipzig if you ever get the chance to go and spend a bit of time in the city it's a beautiful city absolutely steeped in history was part of the eastern block back in the day but very much a centre for the arts, and particularly music, J.S. Bach and Mendelssohn. If you're a fan of classical music and the history, are associated with Leipzig, and the architecture is beautiful, particularly the metalwork around windows and doorways and things. The second place. With Kendi, Favori, Farao, Conversano, Mara, and Trade Andrei Center Capitali. population of just over 600,000 in Leipzig. With Chardon and Ivan this Mjöl weekend, all eyes on the whole sport. 
Full House. They tend to hold about 10,000 people, these big auditoriums. There's lots going on outside as well. Brown will take a lot from the competition today. Got himself back on track. And there's a lot of humility about these sports men and women as well. They, they're the first to admit that when it doesn't go to plan, a lot of regrouping, lots of confidence. Have to bring yourself back again. And Great job from Kusteronde. Supported as ever by Marie. Interestingly, because of, he's got quite big horses, the feeling is that when it's a fast running, longer, bigger arena in places like Stuttgart and Geneva, it tends to suit his horses. But, oh, don't have a nibble. <laughs> a little, little bicker and a nibble there. But he brought all his wisdom, all his years of match practice to it. Really consistent today. And the ball stayed on top, certainly in that all-important first round, which assured him of his place in the drive-off. But the weekend undoubtedly belongs to the Belgian Dries de Greek, our winner. 10 points for him, pushes himself up the rankings table. And definitely in Bordeaux. And the dignitaries pop onto the back. Great fun. I think it the crowd a bit of a show. Let's go. This is curious viewing because quite often we have Boyd in here as director of operations for the crowd entertainment, if not Ice Brand. So these three gentlemen have been here before, they know what it takes. So just sit back and enjoy the last few moments of these teams of incredible horses. And a new winner, a new name in this series taking Leipzig Dries de Greek Lovely trot of that wheel horse on the right hand side. It's another super dressage trot if you're looking around. Plenty of elevation.
energy in these big arenas brought by all these people for a Sunday afternoon's entertainment with the family. Off go the flowers. And he really won the event this weekend. What I mean by that is nobody handed it to him. He was fast, accurate, and the horses just gave him that little bit extra. The alchemy was in place, the chemistry. And when he asked for a little bit more, they gave it to him. Worked so well as a unit, as I said during the rounds. They're so well matched with their confirmation, their strides and types, and that's what made the difference. And a little bit of luck as well, because we all need that in life. So goodbye to Bram. See you in two weeks and Coos after their fantastic seasons and all credit. The man of the moment. Thank you, Dries de Greek. As he leaves, thank you to those horses and thank you to, for joining us. We will see you in Bordeaux. I'm Sarah Dance. It's been an absolute pleasure to share the action with you. Take Still care and stay down. safe. See you in das two weeks' time. MBI World Cup. Driving, jetzt heißt es aufbauen, fleißige Hände müssen wieder rein, denn es wird aufgebaut.